Uh, nice, nice to see you again, uh, and, and that's a beautiful song. Thank you. It's a little heavy, but uh, I think it's okay. I think I think it was beautiful. Don't you guys think it was all <laughs> Thank right? Thank you. Um, so I mean, I got I, I kind of did want to talk to you a little bit about mm -hmm. more than just your your music, and you got in touch with me a little bit over the summer, and you were telling me about these. Um, well, why don't you tell me about it? You were you were sort of having these conversations before your concerts. Yeah, I mean, I just basically put together this night that I called Elephant in the Room. I, I put it on for the first time in Toronto, and then I was heading out east this summer, and I was playing some shows, and I thought, well, I can just put it on where I am, and then uh, I'm putting it on again in Toronto, and, and my idea is just to kind of keep it going, and basically, you know, if I'm traveling, I can have these nights where um, I have conversations with people about, about how they feel about the climate crisis. What, what did you want to get out of this? I felt, um, even though we've been talking about it a lot tonight, I just felt that, you know, I'm in my 30s. This crisis has encompassed my whole life. You know, I've never known a time where the future was like a safe thing that we could count on. And that to me is like this collective trauma that, you know, everyone in the world is experiencing, you know, in the North, in Canada, we're not experiencing it physically yet. We're just experiencing it mentally. But I found it so strange that no one I knew ever talked about that. No one mm. ever said, I'm so scared. Why do you think that is? <laughs> because I think people are afraid. They think they're not allowed to talk about it. They think they're not supposed to talk about it unless they live a certain kind of lifestyle. And I felt that the lack of those sort of emotional conversations was really holding back the whole conversation. So unless you were driving an electric car or you know, or you had a, you had, you're growing your own carrots and you, yeah. you, you weren't allowed to talk about the climate crisis. Which is really absurd because it's gonna happen and <laughs> we need to start talking about it. And also, I mean, we feel that we're allowed to talk about the problems with capitalism even though we all also participate in capitalism. We feel that we can change that system, uh, but with climate change, we think, yeah, unless you drive an electric car, you're not allowed to talk about it. So what did these discussions look like, these ones you were having? Um, they've been really varied. I mean, the most interesting one so far was in Newfoundland. I had conversations with six different people. You know, I had conversations with a, a plastics researcher, a scientist. I had a conversation with a guy who works in oil and gas. I had a conversation with someone who used to work in oil and gas and is now helping people transition away. I had a conversation with an activist who got mad at me on social media um, and didn't like my idea. And so I brought her on to talk to her also. She didn't like, your, she didn't like the idea of a conversation around climate? Uh, she felt that it should be more political. Right. And um, so we talked too. So I, what, what stuck out to me, because I think, and I'm sure it maybe stick out to you guys too, is that there was a conversation kind of by artist or at least run, run by an artist. And when you contacted me, it was asking if I knew anybody in the oil and gas sector. Yeah. And I know you spent a lot of time in Newfoundland and, and, and that's where I'm from. And there's no shortage of people who were working in the oil and gas sector, whether it's in Alberta or whether mm -hmm. it's back home in Newfoundland. Tell me, I thought this was the most remarkable part of the story. Uh, what made you want to in include these voices in there? Well, it's so absurd that that would be remarkable, you know, because to me, I'm a touring musician. I drive, I fly, I'm no different in some ways than someone who works in oil and gas. And we're all in the same boat. I mean, we're all gonna sink or swim. So it's absurd to me, like we should be talking to each other all the time because, you know, I feel like there's so much mistrust in this conversation in Canada. And if we're gonna actually bring down our emissions, we have to deal with that mistrust. Yeah, I, I guess I would just, you know, speaking, I would presume that they would be a little nervous about it, that they would think they were going into sort of the lion's den, you know, they, yes. were, they were the fox going into the hen house. Yeah, I talked to a couple people about the idea of being a part of this night, and, you know, people had varied worries and fears, but what I found so interesting was that I had these great conversations with these guys. Um, the guy who wound up being a part of the night was from Labrador City, and he'd worked in mining his whole life. And we had this awesome conversation on the phone for an hour, and then we had a great time at the night. And I was just like, we have so much in common. There is no difference between us. The idea that there is a difference between us is almost like a construct that we're all perpetuating and we need to stop perpetuating that. <laughs> so, so, how, so how did that conversation go? How did it go? Like you have uh, climate activists, you have scientists, mm -hmm. you have oil and gas workers um, on stage for the first time. How, how did it go? It went so great. Yeah? It was so beautiful. Yeah. Do, do you think people learned something new from it? Were they the people on stage or the people in the audience? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, yeah, I think people felt 
a lot of people, my, my goal with all of these nights is for people to come up to me afterwards and be like, I've never heard anyone talk about this issue this way. And that was my experience um, on that night. And certainly people had never seen such a spread of conversations. But and I, th and I think it's, um, and I don't want to, I don't want to read anything into your, to your mandate here or mm. to, to your mission. But to me, it, it just felt like something that we're not really doing a lot of, which is kind of, we, we, I mean, it gets talked about a lot in the, in the press, and, but it's true. Like, if you want to, you can get media only from people you already agree with. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can hear perspectives only from people you already agree with, whether that be uh, uh, someone who's working on the rigs, who may have a problem with the, you know, with, yes. you know, they might have the same problems, but and we don't necessarily do. think they do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this feels like it's a broader thing. It's about us trying to reach out to one another, people we might disagree with. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the difficulty of trying to bring down emissions by 50% in 10 years, that's something that has to happen as a country, unfortunately. Um, and so we all have to be in this. And that, that means having hard conversations like the ones you yes. had to have. Yes, absolutely. You know, I think, and I think what's really remarkable, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but these conversations aren't necessarily being spearheaded here by a, by a politician. I mean, you're an artist. I think that's really remarkable. Do you think that that brings you a different perspective in this or allows you to have a different role? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think just because I don't have a horse in the race and people don't have preconceived notions about who I am, I mean, I think that as an artist, my songs, what I've discovered, what I discovered about this night and about my songs is I write dark songs and people come to me and say that they experience dark emotions through my songs and they found it healing. So I was like, okay, I just have to be the same thing on stage talking to people as I am in my music because I think the climate crisis is actually so painful to face. And so just trying to model what it feels like to have an open conversation about that pain, I think is really meaningful. And I feel like maybe as an artist, I can do that. And, and maybe when you go home, then you can have a conversation at your dinner table. Yeah, maybe you can talk to your partner or your mom or your brother about how difficult it is to actually face this. I mean, I think that how difficult it is to face this is the root of so much denial and things out there. Well, then I'll, then I'll ask you sort of the mission statement of the, of the show tonight. Mm -hmm. um, well, why is it important for you to vote? Well, it's 2019. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there are lots of issues that are important, but this issue has a time limit, you know? I mean, there's a carbon budget that we can't go through if, if we have a chance at a livable future. So unfortunately, as much as, you know, I would love to vote for other reasons, you know, this is, this is the reason that I recognize I need to vote this time because, you know, we don't have much more time to waste. You're going to play a song um, that I, I don't think anyone's heard before, right? Yeah, I'm going to play a new song. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, do you want to... Is it inspired by anything that we've been talking about? Do you want us to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's, it's a bit uh, metaphorical about the moment of realizing... You know, I think that having to face the climate crisis is having to face... Is, is the same as having to face difficult truths in your life emotionally or... Uh, socially, and so this song is about the moment of realizing that it's actually easier to look at a dark thing than it is to attempt to hide it from yourself. Well, head on over. <laughs> it's been nice to see you. Nice to see you. Tamara Lindman, everybody.